Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Good morning and welcome. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today we are in our second week of Easter and continuing the theme of the resurrection of Jesus. Next week, the Gospel reading takes us to the Emmaus Road, to another encounter with the risen Jesus. And we are thinking today about one of the events also that happened after the resurrection and how that applies to our lives today. Thinking this morning about experiencing the risen Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, from the isolation of our own homes, we step into your presence this morning. We long to hear your word, seek your face, and know that you are close by. Father, bless us today that your spirit may fill us once again to overflowing. And may our worship be a blessing to you this morning. All honour, glory, praise and power be unto the Lamb forever. Amen. Come, now is the time to work. Come, now is the time to give your heart Come, just as you are to worship Come, just as you are before your One 
day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, and now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure to gladly choose you now come now is the time to worship come now is the time to give your heart we Jeff is going to bring us our Bible reading this morning and it is from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. It was the evening on the first day of the week and the doors of the house where Jesus had met were locked because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them. He told them, Peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when they saw the Lord, the disciples were overjoyed. Jesus told them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, then they are forgiven. If you retain people's sins, they are retained. Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, wasn't with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, We've seen the Lord. But he told them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger in them, and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. So we begin in the upper room. The disciples are locked away behind closed doors, knowing that the Roman authorities may be looking for them because they think that Jesus' followers may have taken Jesus' body away to make it look like he rose again after the third day because Jesus told them that this was what was going to happen. So they placed a Roman soldier on guard and sealed the tomb and because they thought that somebody could possibly take the body, so they were taking no chances. Roman authorities would have felt threatened because of Jesus, who claimed to be a king and who was indeed the authority figure to so many people. So then Jesus appears in the upper room where the disciples are together and says to them, peace be with you. What joy that must have been, what joy they must have felt at that time to have Jesus with them again, to see his physical body there with them, just to be with him again. 
And this greeting of peace was not just a greeting. It was, it was his peace that he was giving them. This deep shalom peace that Jesus gives. The peace that only comes from God. We then hear about how the disciples told Thomas about their experience. They went to him and they shared with him about how Jesus had appeared before them in the physical in a physical form and how and what Jesus shared with them and what Jesus said and did. How he blessed them with the Holy Spirit and commissioned them to forgive others. And then Thomas says, unless I see these wounds for myself and place my finger in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were shut, Jesus came, stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he told Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Take your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus told him, Is it because you've seen me that you've believed? How blessed are those who have never seen me and yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not mentioned in this book. But these have been recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through believing... You may have life in his name. Thanks be to God. Jesus appears again when the disciples are together and this time Thomas is with them. And he goes straight to Thomas's question. Jesus straight away addresses Thomas's question by and saying, put your hand and place it in my side. When Thomas encountered the risen Jesus, everything changed. And for us, when we encounter the risen Jesus, things change. We are filled with the reassurance of God's peace. And the beauty of the resurrection is that there is no place that you can be that Jesus isn't. And Thomas experienced that because Thomas knew that Jesus knew that he didn't believe. Now, this passage echoes our lives at the moment. We are locked away behind closed doors. Some of us living in fear, fear for our lives and fear for the lives of others. Well, first of all, Jesus wants you to know his peace. He wants to bring you his peace. How often in our lives do we struggle with doubt? We have questions despite not having all the answers. It was Thomas who followed him when he was alive, willing to die for him, who says, I don't believe. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and place my finger in his side, I will never believe. It's this same Thomas that as soon as Jesus appears, in one breath, in verse 20, says, My Lord, and my God, so quick to realise his mistake in doubting. For many people, seeing and believing in Jesus at this time is difficult, especially when surrounded by so much grief in times of uncertainty, including emotionally, spiritually and physically. Jesus says, blessed are those who believe but have not yet seen. So where can we see God in these times? When we are away from our normal routine of coming together in worship, it's easy to lose sight of where God is. But actually, for some, it opens up more ways 
of seeing God where perhaps we haven't before. God is active around us. God is creating sparks in our community. God is love. God is compassion. And it is this love that sparks the desire to help others. Communities unite and find ways to help each other, sparking community action. Although we do not physically see him, we can see him through sparks that he puts on our hearts to comfort those in need of our support. Although we cannot physically see him, we can see him through the sparks that he manifests in ourselves, changing the lives of others. Most of you would have seen the news and you would have been aware of the war veteran Captain Tom Moore, who is 100 years old this week and by completing over 100 laps of his garden has raised more than £20 million for the NHS. That is amazing. And all this came from a spark of compassion that was planted into his heart to help others. It's hard not to see the work of God around us. Even though these times are difficult. And this we know through God's comfort and hope that we can see. And most of all, his peace in the midst of trouble. But also, we need to see and believe who he is. And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen me yet still believe. We can take comfort in these difficult times, in the wounds of Jesus in his resurrected body, because he knows what it's like to suffer. And he's saying that there is life after what you're going through. There is life after death. All of your wounds, including death itself, I have already suffered for you. COVID-19 has the power to present us with fear, anxiety, uncertainty and death. When Jesus showed his wounds after the resurrection, he was showing that all that we go through, he has gone through as well. We are not alone, that there is hope because he has overcome death itself. All power and authority comes from him and that he has the power over everything, including what we are going through now. When we believe in him, then nothing, not even COVID, can separate us from the peace of God and everlasting life with him. As God is more powerful than our fears and our anxieties. God calls us to live a life of hope and to be instruments of that peace and to bring ourselves into this time of uncertainty to a place where we can also declare Jesus as our Lord and our God. So peace be with you and have hope and reassurance that the resurrected Jesus has full control power and authority over whatever is thrown our way. Amen. And a prayer of intercession. When I say the words, Lord, hear us, would you please respond at home with the words, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we hold before you all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, we pray especially this morning for our government, for Boris, that he would make a full recovery and be quickly able to resume in his duties. And for Matt Hancock, our health minister, that they might make wise decisions, Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, for all of those who care for others in care homes, 
and in people's own homes, that through their God-given skills and insights, many will be comforted, supported and restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful who live near us in our communities, for those that are gravely ill and the dying, that they might know your comfort and your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray for to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.